Hi, Reagan. Okay. All right, guys. So I think we're going to get started. So just a couple of things. Just some housekeeping notes. Remember, you guys are doing a really good job of turning in your artwork to me. I love keeping up to date on what you're doing and just getting able to share what you are creating. So keep doing that. I appreciate it very much. Um, at the end of class today, you can go online and do the exit survey that's always there that pertains to the subject that we learned about. So don't forget to fill that out. And we are going to be going to New York next, and that will be our final destination. So we have this week and next week, and we're gonna wrap up after that. But you guys have been doing great hanging with us. So thank you so much for coming along on this journey with Blue Dog. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. If you can, I'm going to mute you guys and remember to use the chat box. Um, that says my internet connection is unstable. That's not good. We'll see how it goes. But just remember to use the chat box to talk about um, whatever subject matter I'm, or questions I ask you guys, just remember to put that in the chat box, your answers, and just engage that way so we can all hear and participate. So I'm going to go ahead and mute you all. Okay, and then I'm gonna start my share screen and we're gonna talk about Russia. Okay, should be coming up here. Okay, all right, so let me pull up my chat box so you guys can uh, still talk to me while I'm on here. All right, I'm gonna move this over. Okay. All right, so we're talking about a Russian artist by the name of Natalia Gonkorova. So she is a really famous Russian artist. And since we are um, studying Russia, I thought it'd be nice to do a female. So we've done several male artists on our journey. So I thought it'd be fun to do a female. And she is very um, different. So we're gonna look at her in just a second. But before we do, I have an intro question. I want you guys to put in the chat, what do you think architecture is so what if you had to answer the question what is architecture what would you say okay go ahead and put your responses in the chat box okay so i say building something buildings The art of building, when you build stuff like buildings, okay? Building things. It is the design of buildings, okay? Good. How many of you guys would say architecture is a fine art, similar to something like painting? Maybe. Okay. All right. You guys are giving me some answers. Yes. Good. Yes. So I'm going to read from my notes here. It says architecture is the art of designing and building structures that are usually lived in or used by people. It is one of the oldest art forms in history and is always changing. Through architecture, we can see how people before us lived and worked. So it's almost like a history book. Unlike some of the fine arts, such as painting, sculpture, and handcrafted arts, architecture is everywhere 
and is designed to be used and seen and touched. That's what's really cool about architecture. So I asked this question because we're gonna to get to that towards the end of our lesson. So kind of keep that question in the back of your mind while we move forward, okay? Because it did influence our artist, Natalia Gonkurova. Now, here, Natalia is what we would call an avant-garde artist. What do you think that means? Does anyone know what it means? Avant-garde? Type it into the chat box if you think you know what it means. It doesn't mean architect artist. If you know what avant-garde means, go ahead and type it in the chat box. It, it, it's not necessarily a type of artist. It is more so a, a movement or an understanding. You've heard it before, good. It doesn't mean well. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys what it means. It means to do something that hasn't been done before, to experiment with something new. So as an avant-garde artist, that means she was doing things that haven't really been done before. She was experimenting with a new method of doing something, okay? So that's kind of exciting to know that we're gonna be looking at someone that has done something different. Now, what are some of the things that was going on in the world between 1881 and 1962? Okay, that's a pretty good span of time. But there was a lot going on in the world during this time, especially in Russia and Germany and many other parts of Europe. What do you, can you remember what was going on in history during this time? Go ahead and put that in your chat box. War, yes. World War I, World War II, yes, yes. Any other wars that you can think of? After World War II? The seven year war <laughs> cold war very good yes so natalia has been influenced by a lot of these wars and what was going on in her government she went from a czar leadership to a a military dictatorship so a lot of changes in her politics um, a lot of changes in her country that's going to war. Of course, we learned from our videos about the space race. Russia was involved in that during this time. So a lot of things were changing, a lot was going on. She was born on June 21st in 1881 to a wealthy family. Um, her father was an architect. There's some of that um, influence in her life and a descendant of Pushkin who was a novelist. He was a writer, so a lot of art people in her family um so she has dabbled in a lot of different kinds of art set design which is like making backgrounds for stages as well as sculpture and painting graphic design which is computer works but also um you can think of it at her time period it would have been posters designing um, magazine layouts things like that she was involved in fashion so textiles fabrics as well as acting and and dancing uh, she toured with a ballet at one point as well. So she developed her folk art style that you can see here in this background from her childhood spent on her grandmother's country estate. But they had to move to Moscow when she was about 10 years old because her dad needed to find other ways of making money. And so she was introduced to a lot of architecture in Moscow, which we'll talk about soon. Then she moved to France in 1921. And once she moved to France, she never moved back to Russia. She stayed in France until she died. She did travel during that time, but she never went back home to Russia. She was influenced by other artists or contemporaries that lived during her time, like Cezanne, Gauguin, Van Gogh, and Matisse, which we'll see here in just a minute. All right, so here is a uh, Cezanne. So look at the really expressive brush strokes, the bright colors, the black outlines. Um, so we've seen this type of work in post-expression um, 
artwork, expressionist artwork, going into abstract art. So we've seen this type. Can't tell what I'm saying. Is anyone else having a hard time hearing me? Is my computer laggy or are you guys doing okay? Everyone's doing okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So the next one. All right. So this one is a Gauguin. Now here you can see a very, um, what I would call graphic style, very flat, but um, geometric designs. Thank you very much. All right. The next one is Van Gogh. This is his bedroom. It's a pretty famous painting. Um, also very bold colors and lots of brush strokes. And then the last um, person that she was influenced by is Matisse. Matisse loved pattern and bold colors. Um, he was also geared, went more towards the abstract later in life when he did his cutouts. Okay, so she was influenced by all of these artists that were around when she was. So our, let's look at some of her artwork. This is a self-portrait that she did with yellow lilies. This one reminds you of the Van Gogh and the fact that this is a room with a chair in the background and some artwork. And it's got some colors that you would have seen perhaps in um, Matisse, the bright colors, um, the bold outlines like Gauguin with the contour lines. So you can kind of see how these artists influenced her in her own paintings. I'm gonna to go to the next one. This one's called the Four Evangelists. So what I want you to look at here um, is the fact that these were from the Gospels and she was a female doing this artwork would have been unheard of. Actually, people got quite upset because most of the time the icons were not allowed to be painted by women. So she painted these icons um, to present the apostles in a much more modern way. So if you look closely at this picture, you will see that they have large hands that are pretty rough, like they've been doing a lot of manual labor, and they're more representations of a stronger peasant than they would be like a, a saint, like typical icons with the, um, halos around their heads, okay, and gilded. So she's doing a more modern take on the apostles. Now, the scrolls that they carry, look, if you'll notice, they are blank. Nothing's been written on them yet. And she did that on purpose. She says that the scrolls are blank as if the gospels have yet to be written, okay? So she also shows the apostles somewhat perplexed, perhaps over what to write, okay? Now, that is her particular take. Um, you might have a different understanding and that's fine. The message of this artist is that she thinks you should, you should seek an independent and self-directed spiritual, spirituality as opposed to one that's enforced upon you. Okay, so again, her opinions, you can seek your own. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next one. Why? Okay, well, Grayson, um, she had a much different opinion about religion um, than perhaps you do. So she's drawing this from her own personal perspective, okay? Now, this, there's another style of art called futurism, and you can see that in this painting especially. The, the futurists love to show movement, dynamic movement in a very still piece of art. No, dynamic means changing. So if what, how they did that was to show multiple images repeated as if it were vibrating. So I want you to look really close at this picture. If you look at the tires, you'll see multiple circles as if the tires are bouncing up and down on the cobble road, leaving a vibration. You'll also see the man himself and um, diff almost like he's showing you um, different positions, like three of him, but in, in pieces. Um, why are the letters, the man, okay. So um, I'm not sure why the letters are over the man. Um, I do know these are Russian terms and one of them means hat. Um, 
and I'm assuming his hat is very similar to the shape of the cobblestones. I'm not really sure what she was trying to do there, but um, the point of the cyclist futurist movement uh, painting is that it shows a man, you can almost imagine that bike bouncing up and down on the cobble streets moving as he's racing, uh, only showing him moving forward with the repeated lines of the man, but also up and down with the bicycle, okay? So that one is a really nice um, example of her artwork. Let's go to the next one. Now, as she traveled with a ballet, um, they went to Spain and she fell in love with Spain. And here is called the orange vendor. Uh, so if you look at this picture, you'll see a woman that has a basket of oranges on her head. She's balancing that as well as some other fruit in her hands. And so she fell in love with the colors of Spain and the textiles from her love of, um, her love of fabrics and design. And um, she put this together almost in a collage form that reminds me of some of Matisse's cutouts that he, you see later in his life when Matisse was bedridden and couldn't paint like he used to. He would cut paper cutouts. And so this reminds me a lot of that. This one was not, I believe this one was before World War I. Um, someone's asking that. So I believe it is before that period of time. Um, but so you can see a lot of the bright colors. Yes, very colorful. Um, so this one, she says, when I returned to Paris from traveling to Spain with the ballet, I started creating images of Spanish women in colors suggested to me by this country's atmosphere. So she had a lot of appreciation for Spain, okay? She loved flowers, and you can see that as well in the textiles of the woman's dress, okay? I'm gonna show you another piece of art from her. Now, this particular art style is called Rayonism. Now this is very abstract. It's a lot different than some of her other pieces. If you look at it, what do you see when you look at this piece? What does it remind you of? What do you think this reminds you of? Feathers, okay. A forest, grass. Marsh grass, ooh, needles, okay. Pine trees. These are all great answers. Like a close view of grass. Ooh, I like that, like you're really in tight. That's good, pine needles, cool, yeah, okay. Good job, you guys, doing awesome. So would it surprise you if I told you the title of this one was Blue Green Forest? Probably not, right? Okay, so supposedly there is a woman's face hidden in this picture. I can't really find it. Maybe you guys can. But there's also a dragonfly towards the bottom. So if you look really close, you might be able to find that dragonfly. It's kind of in the middle. I, I did find that, but I could not find the woman's face. I tried. I just couldn't see it. But maybe you guys are more creative and can see it better than I can. But. Um, well, okay, so Ryan, I'm not sure of the exact date of this one, so you could look it up to see if it did, if it was painted during the war. It might have been, but I can't remember the exact date of this painting, okay? You see both, Kathy, good for you. That's awesome. You can see a face too, Gray. Wow, you guys are great. Yeah, I, I couldn't see a face, but if you guys can, that's awesome. I'll have to have you guys help me see it. Um, so this one is abstract and representational. So representing something real and abstract representing something that's not real. So the real part is the forest, which would have been shown kind of like the branches or the leaves and the jagged edges. But it's also abstract in the sense that it's showing you an emotion. So the emotions for this one are energy, and life or movement, okay? So she's showing you a kind of a different style 
and her artwork here. Um, I think that's a, she says this painting is a bold attempt to recreate the whole world in its spiritual and concrete totality. That's a big quote right there, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you one more of her paintings. You guys are doing awesome, hanging with me. Okay, this is a backdrop. So here she did a, a stage design. She was commissioned to do the stage design for a um, dance. And I'm gonna read to you a little bit about this one. Um, so she says it's kind of has like a meditative quality, but it also has the colors and the gold details similar to Gustav Klimt. If you guys have ever looked at any of his work, it is a city, yes, very pink and red, yes. Um, she is talking about the power of the church here. In Moscow, there is a cathedral called St. Basil's Cathedral, and it is a beautiful cathedral we're gonna look at in just a minute. But here she's talking about the power of the church, and she shows the power by making these um, towers very long and tall, skinny, almost like they're stretching towards heaven. She uses the colors red and blue and a lot of gold to show that it's both Russian and sacred. And it's a walled city. You can't see it in this picture, but it has a wall built around it to show it that it needed to be defended. So the piece provided the backdrop to a dance performance, like I said, where Gonkarova is trying to say that she is open to collaborate with other artists, that means work with other artists, and that she didn't think there needed to be boundaries between fine art, like painting and sculpture, theater, and life. She thinks they should all go together, okay? All right, so that is our art history on Natalia Gonkarova. If you have any questions on her, feel free to put them in the chat box and I'll try to answer them the best I can. I enjoyed learning about her and her style of art. I think she's very diverse, but yet very talented. So we're gonna move back into our talk about architecture, how her father was an architect, and then this backdrop that she did for this dance performance and her living in Moscow, all were fed by this cathedral called St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. It's near the Kremlin. It wasn't painted these beautiful colors till 200 years after it was built. So it was painted later. But the architecture is Byzantine and it has these onion domes, which are so much fun. They remind me of ice cream cones. I just love them. I love all the colors, but I want us to really take a minute and focus on the patterns, the lines. Remember, we learned that lines are wavy and curvy, diagonal, horizontal. Um, vertical. We learned that there are zigzag lines. We learned that patterns repeat. So look for shapes, look for colors that repeat, and also look at perspective and symmetry. These are lots of words I'm throwing at you. Yes, it was built by Ivan the Terrible. Very good. Or Ivan, I think it was the fourth. Is that Ivan the Terrible? I can't remember right off the end. So thank you, Ryan, for bringing that up. Oh, sorry, yes, Ivan IV. Um, so this beautiful cathedral was construct constructed in 1554 and ended in 1560. So like I said, it has the tent roofs, the onion-shaped domes and drums. It is an ancient structure that's located in the Red Square next to the Kremlin. It has a large fortress that was built in the 12th century. It contains government buildings, churches, and museums. It was built as a memorial to the saints um, that um, they celebrate because of the victory from the invaders from the east, okay? So your assignment this week is going to be re to recreate St. Basil's Cathedral, okay? Now, they're gonna look all different because you're gonna do it your way. So I'm gonna show you some student examples. Here is one that's really simple, um, but notice the overlapping. So overlapping means um, something is in front of something else. So whatever is in front is closest to you 
and whatever is in back is farther away. Also remember when an object is closer to the bottom of the page where my cursor is, it's closer to you than something that's at the top of your page. That means it's farther away, okay? So this one is, it's still got lots of colors and lots of um, texture as well as line and shape, okay? I'm gonna show you another student piece. This one is an older student piece. It does look like lollipops a little bit. This one, I, what I want you to notice is their use of perspective. So kiddos that you guys, a lot of you have been studying perspective. And so they're getting these shapes to have a vanishing point or double vanishing point. You can remember that. They are showing overlapping, uh, lots of use of pattern and shape, so don't forget that. I'm gonna show you some more. These are some other student examples. Okay, again, same types of theory, overlapping, color, pattern, shape. Here's some other ones. Okay, do they need to look a lot like the actual building or we make it a little different? Good question, Jordan. Um, this is your freedom to express the way you would like. The only requirement I have for you is for you to use the idea of doing St. Basil's Cathedral. So that means you should include some onion dome shapes because that is very significant to St. Basil's Cathedral. Um, but how you go about doing it is up to you. So you guys are the artists. You guys are going to um, design and create your own artwork. Okay, you like the one on the left? It is really cool. These are all really great. All right, so I'm gonna go back up here to the top again and show you the artwork again. So just remember, I like, I want you guys, to, you can use like six to eight colors, but when you limit your colors, it does help it from becoming too chaotic. And when you repeat those colors around your art piece, it allows you to move the eye around the canvas. So for example, the artist used red here and then down here. So your eyes going to the red, right? And then some white here and a little white up here. So your eye kind of travels around to color. So you wanna make sure that you're repeating your colors in different places, okay? So, you can restrict yourself to six to eight colors if you want to, that might be helpful. Use a lot of different lines. Um, repeat those lines and patterns. If you look at this one, the curve lines here are repeated over and over, as well as these spiral shapes that look like the twists of an ice cream cone. All right, so make sure the zigzag lines are repeated here. Make sure you're repeating your lines as well as your colors. And overlapping is the last important thing I want to mention. So make sure your piece looks like it is got multiple parts and some of them are closer and some of them are farther away. So make sure if you are able to use um, perspective and draw that, you can do that. If you don't understand how to do that, you can draw one like the, these where it's very little perspective, just straight cones. But if you do have an understanding of perspective, then please, by all means, try to incorporate it like this artist did here, okay? Can we draw ice cream cones instead? I want you to draw St. Basil's Cathedral, but you can be in your interpretation, okay? So let me recap with you. Use your lines, curly, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, zigzag, and wavy. Use color, six to eight, so the eye moves around the canvas. Try to make it look three-dimensional by using your value if you want to. Use overlapping to create perspective. Add a variety of pattern to create unity and symmetry. And turn your artwork into me at my email address that's listed. And fill out your Google survey on the website, lcaodyssey.com. Um, is there any questions that you guys have pertaining to the art lesson? No, okay. Okay. 
I'm going to give everyone a second to see if they have anything else. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and come back to the big screen. Are you going to send a picture or do we have to print one out? Okay, so if you want to learn how to draw St. Basil's Cathedral, ask your mom and dad if you have permission to look on the internet on YouTube is a ton of how to draw St. Basil's Cathedral and pictures of St. Basil's Cathedral. You can look those up um, if you want to get a certain perspective or viewpoint of the cathedral that you would like to mimic or copy, feel free to do that. Um, if it would help you, you can email me directly and I can send you some. If you want me to do it that way, I can do that as well. When will the survey be available? As soon as I get my video done, I have to process it and then it gets uploaded. So usually by the end of the day today, it's, it's ready and available, okay? You are so welcome, you guys. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna unmute you guys. Let me see if I can do that. All right, I think you guys can unmute now if you guys want to say anything. Um, Hello. That's going to wrap up our session today on Russia, and I can't wait to hear what Mrs. Hunt has for you for music. But I've so enjoyed seeing you guys on this Odyssey together, and thank you for participating. You guys have been so encouraging to me, and I really appreciate that very much. So if there aren't any questions, you guys can say hi to each other, um, and I will see you soon, okay? Bye. Bye. Bye.